the flight controls. Those rudders only move about a half inch left or right for full deflection. Okay, well, I think we're ready for takeoff. Uh, winds are calm. We're going to go ahead and go full burner. And we're going to accelerate straight ahead. And we're going to go to 150 knots. At 150 knots, he's going to pull back on that side stick controller very carefully because he's never flown this aircraft before. And we're going to climb out. Go ahead and rotate. I'm going to get the gear for you. Gear coming up. Brian has immediately lifted the nose. He's accelerating through 280 knots in a 25 degree climb. See, there's these horizontal lines on that heads up display in front of him. So by putting the flight path marker, and you see that, Brian, pretty clearly, I think, he put that on the 25. So he's in a 25 degree climb, which is just what I want. Now, actually, I'm gonna ask you to leave it in the burner. Let's climb up to altitude. And what we're gonna do is as we climb to altitude, we're gonna get used to the turning capabilities of the aircraft. So first, let's do a 20 degree climb to keep our speed up so we'll lower our nose nice and easy. One thing that Brian's gonna realize with the flight controls, he's just gonna apply pressure. And depending on the amount of pressure, we'll, we'll control the rate he changes his uh, pitch. While we're climbing 20 degrees, Brian, let's go ahead and get used to this aircraft. Let's make a turn to the left. Now, when you make your turns, no rudder will be necessary in the F-16. The F-16 actually is flown by the computer. The pilot does not fly this aircraft. The pilot actually tells the flight computer, go left. Then the flight computer moves the flight controls in order to maneuver the airplane. Okay, so there's the coastline. Let's keep turning left. They're also called clearing turns. We're just looking for traffic and seeing what's going on. We departed at a Kumsan Air Force Base, South Korea, runway 18. Passing 23,000 feet, you can level the aircraft. Forrest Bryan doing an excellent job. Also roll the wings level. Now, what I just asked him to do was actually more than one thing at once. So I'm asking him to level the aircraft and roll at the same time. So he's concentrating on that. We can also bring the power back just a little bit. There you go. He's leveled now, 27,000 feet, doing about 570 knots. Let's go ahead and roll to the right, Brian. Nice turn to the right. Go as steep as you want. Now, the steeper the turn, the more difficult it is. As he goes steeper, the aircraft loses lift because the vertical lift component that works against gravity is no longer vertical, it's to the side. So what Brian's doing is he's actually applying back pressure to keep the nose of that aircraft up. That's why that horizon is level and not going down. He's at He's really demonstrating excellent aircraft control. I feel pretty comfortable with his skills, so I'm going to ask Brian to roll the wings level, and then I'm going to challenge him. Brian, you're doing really good. So, do you think you can take this down to 500 feet? Go ahead. He's going to dump it down to 500 feet. He's pushing forward on the stick. 27,000 feet. Now, one thing I noticed right off the bat is he pulled the power back to idle. And the reason why Brian did that is a licensed pilot, he knows that, hey, when I lower the nose, this plane's going to accelerate. Now, matter of fact, Brian, you might not have flown an F-16, but in the F-16, it's okay to let's descend about 30 degrees. Keep pumping that nose down. Keep going. We're going to take this thing down quick. This is also a demonstration of a bombing run. This is where the pilot will be coming down, looking at a target, and going to release weapons. One thing they have in the F-16 is they want to make sure that the pilot knows, hey, I'm not fixated on the target. I want to have little reminders or alarms, things like altitude warnings. So the pilot will say, hey, if I hit 10,000 feet, let me know. The pilot will actually tell him that. So as Brian's descending, altitude, altitude. He just crossed 10,000 feet. He's going to continue to descend. And for those who, of us who own the new Honda Odyssey and other new modern vehicles, we also have a forward collision avoidance system. Foot start pulling up. Pull up. Pull up, See that right up, there? Pull up, it's telling the pilot, hey pull man, up, pull you're, pull, up, you're pull going up, down pull and I'm calculating up. that you're going to hit the water if you don't pull up. Okay? Forward collision avoidance. And that's key and critical, especially close air combat support missions when they're fixating on targets on the ground and losing track of their speed. Now notice, Brian, that the air altitude changed, right? The, it's like a bar graph. It's a radar altimeter now. You're at 600, take down to 200. So he's over the water now. He's going to pick it up. He's going down to 200 feet. I'm going to ask him to do something else now. Altitude. Altitude. Another warning below 300. I'm going to say, hey, Brian, let's take this up to Mach 1. Can you do that for me now? Keep the... You're at Mach 0.9. 9.5, 9.6, Mach 1. Boom. He's accelerating. Keep your nose down nice and low. I'm going to have him climb up to 30,000 feet to finish this basic handling. There's... 750. Nice aggressive pull. Let's pull this thing straight up. Let's go. We're going to demonstrate the ability to get up to over 30,000 feet in less than 30 seconds. He's pulling that nose up. There's the boom. Looking good. Boom. 
80 degrees is good right there. We've already passed 10,000 feet and he just pulled up. As he continues to climb and he passes 20,000 feet, this is just after a couple seconds of the pull up, we're gonna get ready to actually go wings level, but we're not gonna push forward like you traditionally would. He's gonna roll inverted. And then he's gonna pull back on the stick to stop his climb and return to level flight. So, he rolled upside down, he's pulling back, there's 34,000, he's upside down, he's gonna sit there for a minute, you know why? Because it looks good. And he's gonna roll wings level. It's a little, uh, how's it feel up there? Bushy, bushy, especially, he's at a very slow speed, high altitude. The higher we go, the less air there is. So we have to be going faster. So he's slow, so the plane's actually very bushy because of the air density. That's what we're gonna do before we go to another maneuver. Let's just do a, a split S, okay? You know, for the split S, Brian? So he's gonna roll inverted, and then he's gonna pull back. So what he's doing, he's doing a 180 degree turn, but not like we would an airliner, left or right, but he's doing it on the vertical plane. So he rolled upside down, and he pulled straight down to the earth. And when he did that, he's reducing his power. There you go. Nice one. Let's do one more of those. Let's see how we do that. He's going to do a 180 degree once again. He rolls inverted, and then he's going to pull back. Again, a 180 degree turn in the vertical plane. And this is how a pilot may decide to turn back and come back towards the target. Excellent. Excellent flying. Okay, Brian, we have a choice here. We can find some air-to-air -air targets. We can do some maneuvering by a field. What would you like to do? Okay, we're going to look for some air-to-air -air targets. I know just the place. Oh, go ahead and lift the nose up for me. 45 degrees, nice and hard. Pull it all the way back. Stop it there. Snap it hard to the left. Get upside down. Nice. Manhandle that plane. 